Since early European exploration, invasive species have come to be a major environmental concern in Canada, ranging from aquatic animals to insects to plants. Invasive species serve as a danger to our marine and terrain-based ecosystems. A well-known invasive insect is the Asian longhorn beetle. It is a forest pest that attacks nearly all broadleaf trees by feeding on and laying eggs in them. It's native to China and Korea and was introduced in North America through global trade. Untreated wooden shipping pilots were brought to Canada in the early 2000s and led to the spread of the species. Infestation was confirmed in Canada in 2003, and currently the pests inhabit British Columbia and Ontario, with the specific cities being Toronto, Vaughan, and Mississauga. In terms of its physical appearance, an adult Asian longhorn beetle is 2 to 4 centimeters in length. It is shiny black with prominent irregular white spots and has six legs that are a distinct bluish-white color. It also has a long black and white banded antenna that are two, one to two times its body length. Because the beetle has a diet consisting of what is essentially tree bark, it is a herbivore. However, it has no known natural enemies in North America. The Asian longhorn beetle both directly and indirectly affects different components in the environment. It hunts healthy hardwood trees such as maple, elm, poplar, and willow. This means it can outcompete native wood-bearing insects, which are often beneficial to a forest ecosystem. What's more is that its impact on a larger scale is very detrimental to the economy ecosystem and society as a whole. A potential decline in broadleaf trees could have major consequences for the country's biodiversity. Many of Canada's endangered and native species are found in the same ecosystem that the Asian longhorn beetle resides in. This puts much of the wildlife at critical risk, which alters the nutrient cycle or energy flow and ends up having a domino effect, eventually wearing out an entire ecosystem. It doesn't end there. The deterioration of forestry also means the loss of the benefits trees provide, such as water retention and filtration, erosion prevention, and oxygen production. In relation to its natural impact, the Asian longhorn beetle creates a dent in Canada's forest-based economy, which could generate a significant loss in revenue every year. What's worse is healthy forests support tourism and recreation, both of which will decrease with the disappearance of trees. Unfortunately, the only way to control the Asian longhorn beetle is to cut down and burn or chip the trees they've invaded. Put together, the extensive impact of these species will most definitely have a hard-hitting effect on not only the current, but also future generations. This doesn't go unnoticed by the government. In fact, the responsibility to exterminate invasive species is a constitutional law that is taken very seriously by legal officials. Many ongoing p policies, plans, and actions have been set to try and rid of the problem. Examples include placing federal regulations, quarantines, using mechanical controls, conducting surveys and research, as well as spreading some public awareness. These were carried out by groups such as the CFIA, National Resources Canada, Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources, and the forestry industry. Looking at the success of the plans and policies, the actions being taken are quite effective in reaching their goal. It was previously announced that the beetle was officially eradicated from Vaughan and Toronto, meaning the work done eventually paid off. In recent times, reports show the return of infestations in the GTA. This could possibly mean that although they were successful, not enough effort was put into making sure the species was eliminated from all areas. Continuation of screenings and surveys is vital long after eradication is complete, which might be where the job was done wrong. Improvements could be made in order to better protect biodiversity in the ecosystem, one of which is to broaden our education and communication programs because they can change how we approach biodiversity communication, conservation. Rather than just touching on the fact that the public is an incredible asset to eliminate invasive species, information should be shared with everyone so that they can know and value um, the preservation of biodiversity easily. Seeing findings and data can improve how plans are implemented. This is not only economically safe, but has been modeled by other countries as well. We could also look further into biological control.